Hello everyone, this is Nikki Batgirl D'Angelo, and today I'm going to be beginning a playthrough in Star Citizen with just an Aurora. I have an alternate account, which I have an Aurora LX on it, and the only difference that this will have from somebody coming into the game today will be it has LTI. And that's just because of when I bought this ship and when I set up this account. So... I take the perspective of what would it be like for someone coming into the game for the first time. They don't really have a lot of friends or they haven't found all the resources yet. What would they be doing? I've thought about this from the point of view of somebody coming into the game for the first time that doesn't have a lot of friends in the game, hasn't found all the resources, so what would they do? They'd come over to the vehicle summoning station. That's my name for this. They'd pull up their ship go out to their ship, Your ship has been bring up to the following all of the missions that there might be on their Moby Glass, and sift through them for one that would be appealing to them. Maybe even sift through a couple of them and try a couple of them in the first day and see what they would bring. Now, an Aurora has three SCU of cargo space. It doesn't have the best weapons, it doesn't have the best shields, but the ship has a very, very small cross section and does have some survivability because of this. So I looked at it from the point of view of what can we do? So I went off on an ECN alert. ECN alerts have been broken for me for a very long time, and they're still broken in this game. Every time I try to complete one, we're going to see in this particular run through, every time I try to complete one, the ships don't try to evade me, they just pretty much sit right there and they're pretty easy pickings for someone that's a horrible combat pilot as myself. <laughs> Nonetheless, I came out here to see if this would be a profitable way of somebody early on making money. Now, I know the best way to make money right now is running Widow from the drug lab over to different places that like to buy drugs. But being the overly righteous person I am, <laughs> sorry, had a little tickle in my throat there, I decided not to partake in such nefarious deeds so early on in my career, not knowing if that would bring about the attention of the advocacy or other people that just want the stash that I'd be carrying. So I went out, I did this ECN and found it uh, extremely broken still. The good news is, as you'll see in just a few moments, I was able to complete this one with just killing a few ships and those ships would be this sitting duck which I think my nice. predictive firing is what's killing me over here. I, I think ESP is broken for me and I should have turned it off. Nonetheless, there's my completion reward. And we made about a little bit less than a thousand from this run. It wasn't such a bad run and I could have gotten a couple of these done, but at a thousand apiece, to get to the ship that I want, I'd have to run a thousand of these. Because I think the first place that you go is going to be to find a, and this is just me, is to find a prospector. Now, I'm thinking about this from somebody coming into the game for the first time, and that's what they would be seeing, that, that dragonfly that was bouncing around. So then I, I, I took off into some of the shops that are on Port Alisar and decided to spend some money. I bought two force walls, put them into my Aurora. Because really this person wouldn't know that it is a uh, rock, paper, scissors when you're trying to put together your ship. That you have to balance your power and your equipment or you're going to go to... Uh, go out to have a fight and you're going to have great shields but no power for weapons. So I just wanted to do this and see how this would improve my survivability. But I also wanted to just test out purchasing. 
and I also just wanted to spend some money and try to make it back in the first couple of days. After having some fun with outfitting my Aurora, I go out to another shop and decide I'm going to outfit myself. I take a look at some of the items on the shelf and decide I'm not ready to start spending all the money I have. Let me just upgrade my undersuit so I could look a little bit more in line with what this character is going to be. So I take a look through the different undersuits and decide to go with this Odyssey Knight flying suit. All black. That's going to be a very, very interesting look for my character here, Cosmic Cat. So I decide to come over to the station over here, look through it one more time, and purchase the Odyssey Knight flight suit. I still find these terminals to be a little bit wonky. I know they'll probably be fixed in the future. A lot of these patches are just to implement the actual systems and then they go back and correct them in future patches. So this is me trying to get this taken care of and we should be in this black spacesuit at this point. Not so bad, liking it. After spending quite a bit of my initial funds, I come over to the trading console and decide maybe it's time to try trading. Maybe it's trying to try hauling some equipment back and forth. So I found medical supplies and I tried to think like a newbie. Someone that wouldn't go on the internet and try to look things up. And medical supplies sounds like that they would be very important to bring down to one of the outposts that are sitting around on Selen, Daymar, Delamar, or Yella. So I took off and headed out to find a place to sell them. I actually did look up online for some places that would offer the most for medical supplies, but it was evidently a much older matrix of cargo sales than what would exist today. I should have looked for one that was for 3.4 specifically, but I didn't actually find that. I found one that was right for 3.0. And so yes, it was Delamar that I chose to go to. Now Delamar is a pretty cool place to go to because it also is the place where Levski is. And Levski is another big place, right? Another big station to go to and see. So I figured, all right, let me be the person that would be checking out the different elements in the game. So, so far I want to point out that I have very, very, very amazing frame rates. I am using a 2080, but I only have a 7700K only. Oh my God. Well, it's, it's a previous generation, but I don't have the latest generation hardware when it comes to CPU, but I do on the graphic card. And I always get certain slowdowns over here when you go into quantum jump, but it seems to be that everyone gets that initial slowdown when you first go into it. But rock solid, amazing frame rate, and that's one thing I just want to point out. So we head on over to Delamar and take the short trip over there. And I start thinking about some of the old games that Chris Roberts has done and some of the newer space trading games like Elite Dangerous. It made sense that medical supplies should be taken to Delamar because they're slightly expensive. There's much more expensive things that I found, like uh, a lot of the minerals. So slightly expensive. And you're taking them a further distance. So that formula, the answer to that formula, should have given me a little bit more money. And we know right off the, right off the spot that this is not going to be a very profitable run. Nonetheless, this for a brand new player is something that I'm sure they try. Looking for all of the different cargo that they could move and finding where they can sell it at the most profit. The biggest problem here is the Aurora only has three SCU of cargo space. 
And unless you want to jump right into the more nefarious deeds that you could do, like moving Widow, you're not really going to make a big profit running cargo. And that's going to be something that becomes very apparent in the first few runs that somebody could make. Now in episode two, I'm going to figure out that there's been some fixes to the way that you can handle cargo pickups. In the past, if you had a cargo pickup and you had to carry a a piece of cargo in your hands onto an Aurora, the minute you tried to climb up the ladder, you would drop that cargo on the ground. And you'd have to try to figure out a way to get that cargo into the Aurora through very unique and very in non-intuitive ways. <laughs> Nonetheless, that's been fixed, so I figure that out in episode two, and that actually starts to give me a little bit more profit, a way to make a lot more money. But here, flying into a place like Delamar for the first time, you know, I've been away from the game for two months, two solid months, and coming back into this game and being able to fly from Port Olisar out here to Delamar and landing at Levski... I'm telling you, every time I do this, I just get, I get excited. I, I think this in, in itself, the way that we could play in this game, is utterly amazing. And I'm not saying that there aren't games out there that can give you this feeling. I know that flying around in Elite Dangerous, when I first started doing it, gave me the same feeling. It was amazing. But here, here in this in this universe that's so beautiful, so perfect. Every time I fly into a different place and there's no loading screens and I can get right out of my ship and walk, this makes everything better. And if I was a first time player of this game, I would be wowed just by being able to do this. I'd be hugely disappointed at the end of my run finding out that I just moved cargo from one station to the other, it took me 10 or 15 minutes and I made 200 credits. Oh goody. And in this case, I think it's far less. I'm going to go back through the video after we're done recording and in the upper left hand side, I'm going to keep a running total and where we are. So we're going to start off with how much I had at the beginning and we're going to move through to the end and uh, just keep a running total, kind of like they did on that TV show, Two Broke Girls. Just so we know where we are in the beginning and end of each episode. Remember, the whole idea here is, I'm a miner, I want to get to the prospector. How long is it going to take me to get there? I'm not going to have you guys go through every single mission that I do to make all the money I need to make to get that prospector. But I am going to surmise them in this way. So walking through Levski for the first time, I mean, I've been through here many times, and two months still gives me a feeling of being back here for like one of the first times, and it's just amazing coming through some of the, the some of the artwork, some, some of the places, the locations that CIG builds are just amazing. So I still find, and people are going to laugh at me because I'm like, oh, just pick, just click the sell button. I still find it very non-intuitive with the terminals being broken like this. I know they're trying to have it that they don't bring up a terminal outside of your eyesight. They want to have it be more realistic, like if you are looking at it. But there's still a little bit of um, keeping you out of frame, keeping pieces out of frame. All right, so we sold something, and we made no money. Ugh. So now that our cargo is sold, it's time to buy something. And what I would normally do here is I would purchase agricultural supplies. But there's a difference between SCU and actually cargo boxes. SCU is the space something takes up. And, you know, you could have much smaller boxes of things that cost a lot less, fill up that SCU with many more of those boxes and make more money. So I made a mistake, got the agricultural supplies, and thought about where I can go. And I think I decided to go to Galette 
or Gillette Family Farms. That to me sounded like a good place to go and sell all this stuff. And in not so many words, you know, when somebody first comes into a game, that first two to three hours is all trying to find out what works and what doesn't work. So in this situation, we're going to find out what works. I always have to look up to make sure that the doors have opened at Levski and over at Hurston. I have hit the Lorville and Levski doors so many times trying to get out, but in much bigger ships. Usually in a ship like my, well, my, my Hammerhead, but I, I hit it a lot in my Constellation and my 600. Those two, I, I just don't see, I, I see the opening and think I can make it and never realize how big those ships really can be. So we're going to head out over to Gillette Family Farms, which I believe is on Daymar or is it on Selen? We'll find out in one or two seconds. I think it's on Selen. So here we go, getting out of here. We're going to have some fun. One thing I like about going to Levski is Delamar is a planetoid, not a moon, not a um, small pl planet. When I say planetoid, I think of like Cirrus, which is one of the asteroids, I believe, in the asteroid belt, I think. But it is a small planetoid-like structure. So this, to me, would be the optimum if everything was as easy to get away from as this is. So we're heading down to Gillette Family Farms, and we are going to go and try to make our landing in the dark. The good news is, if you look over to the top left of the screen, it is dusk. So one of the coolest things I love about this game, what, what I can't believe um, is possible, I know it's possible, but to me it's just a, a very big wow factor is that every one of the planets and moons have their own day-night cycles. I think that's pretty amazing. I'm not sure if they put any kind of movement around the star systems yet, but the fact that they're letting you move, um, rotate on its axis, the planets, I think is pretty awesome. Pretty awesome indeed. So positions, in other words, like orbits, would mean that some points in the year a trip from, say, Crusader to Hurston will be a lot shorter than other points of the year. Right now, Hurston's on the opposite side of Stanton, Stanton being the, the star in this star system. And at other points, kind of like when we're trying to get to the moon or Venus or to other, other planets in our system, you might have the planet much, much closer to you because it's on the same side of the star. In our case, Sol. In this case, Stanton. So coming in at night is just about as bad as it is landing at an uncontrolled field in real life in the dark. But there really isn't even a landing pad at this location. You really just have to sit down somewhere in front of the main hall. So at this point, we started the day with 26,000. After the first mission, we were up to 28,000. Well, 27,820. After purchasing our force walls, we were down to 15,220. And by the time we were done with everything that we did, purchasing everything that we purchased, we were down to 12,820 credits. After our first run, running medical supplies over to Levski, we were back up to 13,114. And now, landing at this wonderful place, Gillette Family Farms, to end this first episode and get us situated for the next episode where we actually start to make some bank. Let's see where we're at. I love, I, I love this game. Getting out of the seat, having to walk, open the doors, and oh God, it's just a wonderful game. I love this. So these little farm pods make me so excited for the future, being able to build my own settlement and put these out there, make some money, selling, I don't know what. I don't even know what we're going to be able to grow, but this should be a pretty amazing thing. 
So we started today with 26,000, spent a boatload of money, which brought us down to 13, well, sorry, 12,820. And we were at 13,114 before this run. So let's see where we get to. Because this is the most interesting part of this whole night that I spent. And what I mean by that is I expected to make maybe 100, maybe 200. 100 credits moving agricultural supplies to a farm we made two credits we went from 13,114 to 13,116 this run was the most disheartening I made during the evening anyway folks this is going to bring us to the end we're going to have another episode of these and take it to a different level after this we are going to Find new ways to make money in Star Citizen very early on, especially if all you have is an Aurora. And I hope you join me for those future episodes. I hope you like that I'm doing this. If you have anything that you could add, please put it in the comment section below. If you do subscribe, please click on the bell-shaped notification icon so you get notified of all my future videos. And please consider clicking the thumbs up if you like the video because it will very much help the channel grow and with that said folks you all be safe out there and I'll talk to you soon bye